Hello again, everyone. Chris Matthew with Forbidden Knowledge News, having a blast at the Laughlin UFO Mega Conference. I just saw the most amazing presentation from Billy Carson. Killed it. Thank you. Billy, how are you enjoying this? I know you had some problems getting here, but so far, how you like it? Listen, it was great. Um, you know, we in life, you're going to have bumps in the road. Right. And it's how you handle those bumps. And um, uh, I, was, I made a decision I was definitely going to make it here. And I just didn't give up. And I'm glad I did because a lot of people were here to receive the information. They loved the information. They were very excited. And uh, the only bad thing was I ran out of time to continue to talk for another two hours if I wanted to. But it's OK. We got two and a half hours of good, solid content. Yeah. And one of my favorite things about these uh, gatherings, these conferences, and I'm sure you've been to plenty, is the sense of community, how you can talk to anybody about any of these topics, paranormal consciousness, spirituality, ETs, and everyone will just join in. You know, you can't do that at your grocery store, Walmart, or sports game or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, here you have a more open venue. People are open to accepting and hearing information about stories that the average person would just dismiss instantly and because some of the things that have happened in my life and some of the experiences i've had i can't discount anybody mm -hmm. i've got to listen to everyone and i've got to believe that what they're telling me is accurate based on their perception and i want to hear these stories because i want to understand more the more stories i hear the more i can put together the pieces and i can see a track record being good when i do see it. Something's happening to a lot of people by the millions. And it's just that a lot of people are afraid to talk about it. Places like here, you can openly talk about it. Yeah. Now, as far as your presentation, uh, like I said, it was amazing. Uh, I liked when you were going over the ancient uh, alien civilizations that could be scattered across the galaxy that had these uh, basically these ancient wars. Maybe explain a little bit about uh, some of those ancient civilizations. Well, some of those ancient civilizations were uh, really stemming from the Pleiadian star system. Now, in the Pleiades, there were a lot of wars. Oh, this is millions of years ago. And during these wars, uh, some of the peoples that were on those planets were able to flee and go into other star systems. When they got to those star systems, they created breakaway civilizations, which they then built up. But because of that warring nature, after their golden age collapsed, war rose again. So it seems to be this theme of the rise and fall of civilizations, like folks talked about in the Emerald Tablets. Um, we've you've shown evidence that uh, we've had these ancient, possibly even like nuclear wars. When we look at the anomalies on some of these planets, like even Mars, and we look at the anomalies on the moon, uh, you were showing evidence that these civilizations could have existed there and may still even be there. Yeah. What a lot of people don't realize is that um, one of the things that we, we find out in, in you know, astrophysics and space science is that potentially there might be life in the universe somewhere 20 million light years away. The reality is, like I showed today, it's right above our heads. Remnants, space civilizations, potential life forms caught on camera by NASA and the European Space Agency on actual you know, video and, and imagery taken directly from their servers with no imaging, no obfuscation, no editing right there for the world to see. It's like they're hiding the truth in plain sight. And now speaking of hiding the truth, another part of your presentation was on rogue planets and how uh, Planet 9 or Planet X could possibly be one of those that we may have to take a close look at and pay attention to in the future, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's a planet on a very strange elliptical orbit around our sun. In the ancient tablets, they talk about a shar around 3,600 years on average. Now in modern astrophysics, they're talking about um, 4,200 years. We do know that based off of orbital periods, orbits do change over time. For example, every year the moon backs off of Earth from a distance of a few centimeters. In a few hundred thousand years, the moon is going to look like a dot in the sky to us. So this, these changes in orbits change and are pretty much standard around the entire universe. One thing that I, I really enjoyed was speaking to all the pre presenters about their personal experiences, um, especially the contactees and people who have had abduction experiences. Yeah. Um, but one thing I've noticed is that they have all told me stories about how they believe that ETs possibly walk among us. And they have may, may have even seen them at these conferences. Mm. Do you think that that's possible? Oh, it's really possible. I mean, 
they could be sitting right next to us and we wouldn't even know. They could be on a podcast with you right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's, um, you know, one thing we have to realize is that we look like them. And because they're master geneticists, they can literally fit right in just by making a couple of tweaks to their own genes and, and the next generation will fit right in. And they have the capability of doing this. That we're doing the same thing to birds and dogs and breeding, breeding horses and so forth and so on. Now people are combining, you know, frogs and snake DNA. There's a lot of this weird stuff going on that we're doing. And if we're doing it at our level of understanding in science, imagine what a being one million years ahead is, is capable of doing. And I do think that they're still walking amongst us at this very moment. Maybe concerning to think about, but uh, very interesting to say the least. Um, before I let you go, Billy, I want to get your thoughts on what's going on with disclosure in the mainstream right now. It's crazy. Um, even though, you know, I have to step back and I can't trust all of it because of the sources it's coming from, you know, our, our mainstream media, the, the government. Uh, but you have to think, you know, this stuff never was presented before from these mainstream sources. Yeah. It's all coming out now. Uh, and it seems like in some aspects it's being painted as a threat right and i would think if there was a threat they would have wiped us off a long time ago yeah um why do you think this is happening now this this it's okay to talk about this you know because they need more money and it's the, we've ran out of countries that we can destroy and bring democracy to mm -hmm. and so then that we've brought democracy to the world <laughs> uh the war machine is coming to a halt and that means the money comes to a halt so what's the next best thing oh wow space we need space weapons we need space technology we've been doing it covertly and overtly with go collecting these trillions of dollars now we can say look guys we're going to take 20 trillion and put it into the space force mm -hmm. but we need a threat to back that so what's the threat we're going to fly some of our own created ufos that are really uh, identified flying objects we know what they are they're tr3b's from the aurora, aurora project most likely and we're going to buzz our ships and we're going to buzz commercial aircraft, and we're going to scare the crap out of people by telling them it's a threat to our national security, that these things are coming to our bases, which they are going to the bases, but they're deactivating nukes when they go to the bases. They're not doing anything but monitoring and looking to see how crazy are we that we've got nuclear bombs aimed back at our own planet, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, but they won't put it out there that way. They're going to put it out as, oh, it's a threat, national security. They can, they're going to take the nukes. People are thinking, oh, they're going to take our nukes and bomb us with them. Mm. No, these beings are a million years ahead of us. Even the Anunnaki were close to a million years ahead. And with that level of technology, if you read the Mahabharata, they have the Brahma weapon. They can destroy a planet with one beam. Boom. Yeah. They're not going to come here and play games with us. Right. So the fact that that hasn't happened means that we've been kind of abandoned to grow up for our, on our own. Uh, and, and there's a seems like a group of beings that are, are watching and monitoring and looking to see how we develop. And so I think that UFOs are real, uh, but I think that a lot of this disclosure or semi-disclosure mm -hmm. is so they can get the backing to collect money for the war machine because they have to find a new threat to create, to generate money via the military. Now, when the real truth comes out, and I think that's not going to come from the government. I think it's going to come from people like you, the researchers, the, the scientists, the right. experiencers, contactees. When this truth comes out, do you think the, the planet is ready to hear what it is? I think the planet is ready to hear it if it's presented in, a, in the right way. Mm -hmm. and one of the parts I was trying to get to in my workshop was showing how even though that they came, you know, these, these this one group of beings were a warring race to fight against each other and kind of really manipulating and using human beings as slaves and so forth. In the end, we're here to grow up on our own. And we found out through our own science that DNA can be reprogrammed. Mm -hmm. And the RNA that is in us that has the, the memories of our ancestors, that old coding and programming can also be reprogrammed. And I was going to show how that can be done through affirmations, through positive thinking, through service to others, uh, through acts of kindness, through believing in yourself, through searching within, seeking within. All those things we found now can really, even saying affirmations three times a day out loud for 21 days, starts to rewrite DNA. We can actually re-encode ourselves with new programming and change the way we feel about each other, change what we think. Uh, and that's really where we need to head, you know, as, as, as a people on this planet. Um, but the way that they're going to present it is threat, 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 which right. puts the fear in us. And then when we when we're scared, when we're scared, we'll do anything they say. 
Well, we live in fascinating times, to say the least. Um, you know, there's some terrifying parts and there's some very exciting parts, things that I'm looking forward to. And I think we just need to keep an eye on everything and then take it as it comes. And Billy, thank you so much for talking hey, with thank me. Thank you, brother. Great I presentation. You. Enjoy the rest of your stay. I will. Thank you.